Hello, thank you for joining me. In this uh, set of videos, there's going to be two of them on eDrawings. I'm going to show you how to navigate through eDrawings. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to navigate, navigate through a SolidWorks uh, assembly. So in SolidWorks, I save it as an eDrawing file. And in eDrawings, it gives you the ability, or anybody has the ability, to actually look at the look at the model that you put together for them. It's a real good viewer, and it's available at uh, eDrawingsViewer.com. So uh, the, uh, the advantage of this is it's a, it's a free download. You download it, you can look at these models, you can make uh, edits, uh, you can make uh, comments on them. I shouldn't say you can make edits because you can't. That's one thing eDrawings doesn't allow you to do is actually make modifications to your model. But it allows you to make comments to that model and navigate through your model. So it gives you a lot of flexibility to be able to view what somebody has designed for you. So what I like to do is kind of show you the toolbar tour. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start over here into the in the, the manager area and uh, kind of go from the top to the bottom and show you the tools. I'm going to go up here to uh, the menu area and go from left to right. In the second video, I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's do this. Now you have the model open. You've agreed to the terms and conditions of uh, downloading the drawings. Um, let's get started. So what we have here is a pneumatic cylinder. And uh, the first button up here on the top is uh, the components button. And it shows you because of the icon up here with the green uh, square on top of a, what looks like a, a T-shaped uh, part below that. It gives you an idea that it is a uh, it is an assembly. It follows the same format that SolidWorks uses. So when you press on that, you automatically have a move button. And what that does is it shows you all the components that are associated with this model, starting up the, with the assembly on the top, and all the parts that are associated with that assembly. A lot of O-rings, there's a gland, there's a piston, a rod, and a basic cylinder on the outside. And if you press the move button, this gives you the ability to take the model apart a little bit. You have a couple different choices in here. You can do the, the free drag or the triad uh, when you move. So I think it automatically defaults to the triad. But if you click on any part, let's say we want to take the cylinder off, what you have is a triad. Uh, a couple things you can do. You notice you have three arrows in that triad, the X, Y, and Z arrows. If you click on that yellow arrow, which is the Y direction, if I pull that up, it takes that cylinder and moves that thing off. Clicking that again, I can pull on one of the other arrows and move it in a different direction. I could also rotate it, too. So you see these uh, rings associated with uh, the triad. I can rotate it about the z-axis and do that, and maybe take some of these other elements and do the same thing, too. Uh, the desire here is to be able to pull this thing apart and uh, look at it and be able to see with a, lot, a little bit more clarity. Now, if you get this thing all goofed up like this, you want to put it back where you want it to go, what you could do is go up back up here to home. Go to the home button up in the menu tab and it puts everything back together again. So let's go back to move again and take a look at this one more time. Free drag is another way. What you can do is just grab an element and move it off. It's a little bit quicker if you do it this way. The problem with this is that sometimes it'll move things off in a direction you may not think you might, might want to move them off to. Might be moving to the front or the back or the left or the right or the top or the bottom, but you really don't know. Uh, that's where the triad might uh, come in uh, use. Another thing about the triad too, if you're clicking on the part, you can actually tell it very specifically which direction and uh, how much in that one direction you want to go if you want to uh, do that. And again, once you do that, once you move that around, uh, go back to the home button. It takes you right back to where you wanted to go again. Now let's say you're, uh, you probably see me moving the model around here if you're not used to uh, SolidWorks or drawings. What I'm using is my mouse. I'm using the middle mouse button in order to rotate it. Um, if you use the middle mouse button and depress that down and uh, just move it around, you notice that the model moves too. You could also use the middle mouse button to the scroll wheel and move it back and forth. And that will allow you to zoom in and out. Now it will zoom in and out to the cursor. So wherever your cursor is, it's going to zoom in and out to that cursor location. So if you get that thing goofed up and you can't find your model or it's a way out of view, uh, the F key, which stands for fit, get your model right back there in view again. All right, let's go to the next one, configurations. Right now, I have no configurations of this. Configurations are like different forms of the same uh, assembly. I might have a configuration that would have the piston all the way in, and maybe a configuration with the piston all the way out. If I did have two different configurations, it would be, uh, it would be displayed here. And I can click in either of those uh, configurations to show you that different view of that model. Still the same model, it's just a diff different configuration of it. Reordering views. Uh, if I wanted to change my views around, I can actually click in these views and uh, you can see what the views are going to be like. It's a little bit different from uh, what may be the normal orientation of a, uh, a pneumatic cylinder what it might be. But what I'm doing when I model this is I modeled it with the expectation that uh, using the front of the vehicle that the cylinder is going to go on. It's going to be horizontally 
mounted uh, in the front of the vehicle. So this is actually the front view. And then the back view is just behind that. Top view is going to be looking down right on top of these, uh, you know, these inlet holes. And uh, you got the left view and the right view and so on and so forth. Uh, it's got a button up here that allows you to reset your views. If you want to take that left view and bring it up to the top, you can do it by simply by dragging it or clicking in on that view and then moving that up. And you can reset it all the way back where it just goes from isometric, front, right, back, top, left, bottom, that sort of thing. So, why is that relevant? Why do you want to change your views around? Well, I'm going to jump up here to our menu bar and show you this play button up here. What that allows you to do is allows you to go through all the different views up here one at a time about a second or two in each one of these views, it goes through that order. So if I go to the play button, it goes through those views. So it's going from isometric, it's going to go to the front view, back view, right view, top view, left view, and bottom view, and then it repeats itself. Kind of fun. You can do that very quickly too, just by going to the next button or the previous button, and when you're all done, you can go ahead and press stop. So we'll probably visit that here again too. So, that's your views over here. And again, uh, something about uh, SolidWorks, uh, if you're not used to this, if you take your cursor and rest it, rest it over the button, the tool that you want to use, and some of the options associated with it, it tells you what that, uh, what that button's going to be. So the next one is going to be Markup. This is something where if you have a, uh, kind of like writing in a piece of paper, if you have something to mark up in here, you want to send that back to the person who designed this or share this with somebody else, this gives, gives you the ability to uh, put some annotations in this and be able to send that model back. It's kind of like marking up a piece of paper, but you're doing this electronically. So uh, the first thing might be a dimension. Maybe you uh, want to dimension something, you want to make a comment about that or kind of show that as a dimension, you do that. Maybe you want to make a comment, uh, point to something, and say this uh, should be maybe 15 inches, perhaps. Might be something you might want to put down there. And uh, what that does is puts it in the model. Now, what you have here is a, is a manager you're developing here. You have uh, the first comment in here, which is uh, the basic one. Then you have the two comments we just added. If we continue to add comments in here, um, made of steel, perhaps. We can add that to the, the comments we already made, or we can go to a different orientation. You notice that those comments disappear, and maybe put in some different ones. Maybe we want to put a balloon around something, and uh, perhaps say something like, uh, this needs to be demolished. Needs to be removed, perhaps, as, uh, an, as an example. And typically, uh, the revision cloud uh, shows you something that needs to be revised. So what you have over here in your feature manager tree, or in your manager tree over here, is you have your original no comment, you have uh, our three comments we put in there, and then your uh, the third, or the, the last comment we put in here. This allows you to take your model, spin it around, add uh, different elements to it, uh, annotations to it, in order to better explain what you're trying to get across in regard to the modifications that you think should be made. So all sorts of things over here. You can add a picture, um, uh, you can go ahead and save that markup and uh, it becomes embedded in this file over here. Plus at the very end we're going to go ahead and press the save button too. Any yeah, of the various options. You have a cloud, you can put around the whole thing. You have a cloud with annotation, a cloud with annotation and an arrow. And you can also add uh, just basic geometric elements too in here, like lines or circles. If you want to highlight something or show something else off, you can do that too. Splines and arcs are uh, associated there too. So enough of that. Measure. Measure is a good one. You can activate measure by clicking on the activate measure button and just select certain items. Let's say you want to make, uh, make sure that uh, you, that's a, a certain uh, um, distance. Um, so I actually got that stacked there a little bit. I can't see what's really behind that, but you can clear that and move that around. Maybe we're going to select on that uh, circle over here. Maybe click on this face over here and see how that measures. That comes out to 38.934 inches and so on and so forth. You could do something very similar with the markups and actually put a dimension in there so it's there and uh, uh, embedded in the, into the model. But if you really need to measure something and not really make that part of the annotation, that's the thing to do with that. And you can uh, you know, des uh, designate your units, inches, millimeters, angles and degrees, and radians, and uh, so on and so forth. You have a selection filter up here. If you want to select faces, select edges, select uh, vertices or uh, select hole, you can do that. So you can pretty much uh, discriminate on what you want to do. For instance, if we want to do holes, maybe the whole distance between that hole and this hole, we can do that. And it won't be too hard to do that. You can do this from a distance if you do the selection filter. 
That way you know you're not going to be selecting an edge or a face. You're definitely going to be selecting these items specifically. Next one. Section views. These are pretty cool. This allows you to actually look inside of the model. And I was getting all goofed up, so I'm going to press the F key, get that thing back in shape again. So with the section tool, uh, we can do the XY plane. We're going to do the same thing like we did with the uh, measure tool. We're going to activate that. So you want to activate the section tool. You want to make sure you go up here to that button. And we can do the XY plane, the YZ plane, or the XZ plane, and actually see what's inside of our model. So again, activate the section tool, allows you to see what's inside the model. You can scoot inside and see what might be there. You can also select a specific face on that model in order to uh, have a plane of uh, where it's going to make that section to. So you, again, you have the X, Y, Y, Z, and the X, Z plane, but you can also do the face plane. So if we want to click on this face, this uh, plane perhaps, and my measure tool is still on, so I'm going to go back to measure and I'm going to turn that thing off. Let's go back to section and see what we can do here. So now we're going to click in this face. So now it's going to section to that face. Hmm, that's not quite what we were looking for. Maybe it just did the edge. But click on that. Click on that uh, face. That's kind of what we want. So we want to be able to look inside of it, but may not, may not necessarily actually right down the center of that. We can take that uh, that uh, that section and flip it too. Let's say we instead of looking at this side, we want to actually look at the short side of it and spin that around. Maybe the F key to get that thing back in shape again, right right back where we want it to be. And we can see some of the elements are associated with that. So we can show the plane down here. These last two options down here, or we can not show the plane. Let's go ahead and flip that to the other side so we can see it uh, a little bit better. Again, I'm going back through between the, the you know, scroll into the middle mouse wheel for this. I can show the plane or not show the plane. I can show a cap to all these parts or show the everything being uh, kind of hollow. So there's a couple of different options in there. I kind of like showing the cap, but sometimes it's a little bit more instructive to see things hollow. So you can see how these elements uh, revolve around and are, are visible in the back. And when you do that, it actually shows you a red edge as if it was just cut and red hot. Uh, you're kind of looking at that red edge there, kind of shows you the edge of, uh, of those uh, models that you actually had cut. So last one is, uh, if you just rest your cursor over it, is the stamp. I'm going to go back to the section view and undo that. So we get that out, we just get back to our basic model. Let's go to stamp. You have all sorts of stamps put in here, and it's kind of like a, a very quick way of putting annotations in here. Void is uh, rather uh, harsh if you want to put that in there, but draft might be a good one too. Perhaps that's a, a draft version of, uh, of something that ultimately you expect a final model of. And other things you can put in here too. As a kind of an annotation that you can send back to your model and when, uh, when it comes time to do that. So I think that's enough for this video, probably a lot more for this video than it should have been there, but uh, I hope you learned from this, and we'll have a second video just showing some of the tools on the top.